Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the U.S. Battleship line. This is the Tier 7 Colorado-class battleship. The Colorados were the last U.S. Standard-class battleships to ever be produced. They were built between 1917 and 1923 and served with the U.S. Navy until 1947. Three were completed out of a total of four planned ships. The Colorado, West Virginia, and Maryland were completed while the Washington was three-quarters of the way done when her purchase order was canceled. The Colorado class was the pinnacle of the U.S. Standard battleship design, and it featured the 16-inch main guns, which were heavier than the preceding standards, which all employed 14-inch guns. The 16-inch guns were added as a direct result of, ja of the Japanese mounting the 410mm or 16 and change inch guns on the Nagato-class battleships. The Colorado-class would be propelled by the turboelectric transmissions that were developed during the New Mexico and Tennessee-class battleships. Of course, not all the New Mexicos had that. Only New Mexico herself. And that really helped her fuel economy out tremendously. Of interesting note... The Washington, she was sunk as a naval target, and I find this really interesting because you don't get this impression from playing the Colorado in-game, but when they were trying to sink her, it took two 400-pound aerial torpedoes and three near-misses from 2,000-pound bombs, and that only caused a three-degree list on the 75% complete hole. A scuttling crew then boarded her and detonated 400 pounds of TNT in her, and that still failed to sink her. Two days later, she was hit by 14 14 inch shells that were dropped from 4,000 feet onto her hull. Only one of them penetrated the deck, and the ship remained afloat. It would take 14 more 14 inch shells from the Texas and New York to finally sink the Washington's 75% complete hull. How cool is that? Also of other note, the Colorado class is part of the Big Seven battleships that were exempted from the Washington Naval Treaty's limitations on 16-inch guns. They are joined by Nagato, Mutsu, HMS Nelson, and HMS Rodney in that honor. In terms of service history, the West Virginia, Maryland, and Colorado had extensive service histories. The West Virginia, also known as the Weavey, and the Maryland were both at Pearl Harbor during the attack on Pearl Harbor. West Virginia was the heaviest of the two to be damaged, and the only reason they were able to raise her and modernize her and put her back into service was because skilled damage control teams counter-flooded the flooding from the aerial torpedoes and set it down on the bottom of Pearl Harbor on an even keel. She would get extensive modernization to the point where she no longer resembled a Colorado class. Her superstructure looked more like the South Dakota class battleships that were between the Washington or the North Carolina class and the Iowa class. She was one of two ships in this class that would receive the 5 inch 38 cal Mark 28 dual purpose gun mounts that would be seen as secondary armaments on the North Carolina and later ships. The Maryland also received that upgrade, but it wasn't until the very end of World War II in 1945 when she actually received those upgrades. The Weavey and Maryland would participate in the Battle of Surigawa Strait, and during the battle, the CXAM radar on the West Virginia picked up the approaching battle fleet at 42,000 yards. She was able to pick out Yamashiro, the Fuso-class battleship at that range. She had a firing solution at 30,000 yards and finally began opening fire at 22,800 yards, or 20.8 kilometers. In her first six salvos, she landed hits in five of them on Yamashiro. She would go on to fire 93 16-inch shells during that battle. Marilyn, she fired 48 shots during that engagement. Colorado's major con contribution to World War II came from bombarding shore emplacements with her guns. During the shelling of Tinian, she suffered 22 medium caliber hits, but the ship remained on station and in combat condition the entire time. Colorado would go on to fire more 16-inch shells during the Pacific Campaign than any other 16-inch gun ship. So how does that all translate to in-game? Because honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, 
that I had nightmares about this how to play video. This ship gave me headaches during closed beta and open beta because this ship was legitimate junk then. And since then, Wargaming has gone and made some very big improvements to her. The biggest improvement was they increased the speed at which the turrets turn so that they can turn quicker. They also decreased the dispersion on it, which made the ship way more accurate than the previous Colorado was. Those of us who played through the Colorado in closed beta and open beta, you're going to have to toss all of your preconceived notions about this ship now, because if you haven't played her since those buffs, you're in for a real treat. This ship is night and day different from the Colorado we experienced during closed beta and open beta. She continues the long-standing tradition of the U.S. standard battleship, for better or worse. Yeah, that means 21 knots at Tier 7, which is just really quite slow, but there are several advantages to that that we talked about in that South Carolina video. That slow speed allows you to really put yourself in the right location to have the most effect on the battle, and once you're there, your armor profile gives you plenty of resistance to incoming fire to be just that annoying anchor that pulls the rest of your team forward. She has pretty solid anti-aircraft armament for her tier. Granted, the Gneisenau and probably the Scharnhorst have better anti-aircraft than she does in-game, but that might be something that might change in the future. She is also extremely maneuverable for a tier 7, ba tier 7 battleship. She almost turns on a dime. That seems kind of cliche, but honestly, it is difficult to compare the maneuverability of this ship to any of the other tier 7 battleships because it is really that maneuverable. It's got a really short rudder shift time and a really tight turning circle. And she doesn't really lose a whole lot of speed when turning either, which really helps her out. And as I said before, Wargaming has buffed her gun dispersion so that she can actually hit what she's aiming at. That is a godsend because I remember being 7k away from a Nagato and just consistently, you know, shelling after shelling after shelling missing because the dispersion would literally put four rounds in front of the ship, like close to you, just shallow, and then it would put the remaining four long. So you would literally bracket the ship lengthwise, and, and it just, you never could hit the thing. And that was a point-blank range for battleship play. Now, of course, one of the big problems with Tier 7 battleships is that the Gneisenau and Scharnhorst exist. They go really fast, and they have torpedoes. So if you happen to see either of those two ships coming your way, you need to get out of that situation as best you can. Request support, be spamming that F7 key, and make sure your friendlies know that to target that ship. If you can, turn yourself away so that any torpedoes that do come, have you have much more reaction time to their coming towards you. And make sure to keep yourself angled at all times, because you don't have a whole lot of bow armor to really reflect all their shots and prevent an overmatch from the front with those 15-inch guns. However, you do have a lot of belt armor, so much like the Scharnhorst and Gnais now, any shells that actually impact your belt are going to bounce, and you'll see that in the battle video. Let's break down the stats on this tugboat. In terms of survivability, she still has the worst hit point value out of any of the Tier 7 battleships. 50,100 hit points. Her TDS is 39%, which is actually really quite good, and probably not as good as it actually was in real life. Her main battery consists of eight 16-inch guns and two-gun turrets, four of them in total, two four, two aft. She does have a secondary complement that composes of 16 5-inch guns, eight of which are the 25 caliber dual-purpose mounts, and eight of which are the 51 caliber secondary only. The main battery has a firing range of 16.7 kilometers, and your secondaries have a 6-kilometer firing range. In terms of anti-aircraft, she has 37 20mm Orlikon guns, 6 of the 40mm Bofors Mark 1s, those are the dual mounts, and 8 of the 40mm Quad Bofors on board. She also has those 8 5-inch 25 caliber dual purpose guns that we talked about. Her max speed is the US standard, standard 21 knot speed. Her turning circle is a 
very, very short 640 meters with a rudder shift time of just 12.9 seconds. She's let down by her detection range, 16.2 kilometers by sea and 11.5 by air. But really, this ship is maneuverable enough that at those ranges, you're not going to be taking a whole lot of damage from incoming fire if you are using that rudder all the time. And you'll see that in battle in the battle video too. In terms of upgrades, the upgrades are the standard US upgrades. Main Armaments Mod 1, always going to be there. This second slot, we have a slight change from the previous New Mexico. You remember I took the range module for the main guns. Instead, on the Colorado, I recommend taking the plus 20% to the maximum firing range of your anti-aircraft guns. This pushes your 5-inch guns out to 6K and your Bofors out to 5K with advanced firing training and basic firing training. That really helps out this ship's anti-aircraft suite. The third slot is going to be Damage Control Systems Mod 1. That's a standard. And, of course, in the last slot, Steering Gears Mod 2 for that reduction in rudder shift time to make this thing really dance. I cannot emphasize enough how awesome it is to have a 12.9 second rudder shift time in a 640 meter turning circle on a battleship. Now, if only Iowa would have her realistic 700 meter turning circle. All right, so those are the stats. Like I said, she plays like an upgun New Mexico, so let's dive right on into that battle video. All right, as I said in the first part of this video, this ship has changed a tremendous amount since the last time I played it. You can see that we are here in a tier 7 fight. There's not a whole lot of battleships on our team. In fact, this actually ends up being a, a pretty close defeat, unfortunately, but... It was a good battle regardless, and like I said, this was my first battle back in this ship. First battle back in this ship after having not touched it in over a year. Color me impressed with the way that this ship has changed. In closed beta and right after the open beta, these ships did not do well. The turrets were really slow, the gun accuracy was actually quite trollish, for lack of a better phrase. And they've changed both of those. And it is just an impressive ship right now in game. I, I, I'm shocked. Legitimately shocked. I, I'm, I'm speechless. Literally speechless at the way that the ship performs. Of course, being a U.S. standard battleship, you still have the same basic concept that we've always had from these ships. You always want to keep yourself angled. You want to pick a point in which you can maximize your effect on the battle. Now this map is Neighbors, and if you haven't seen some of my other videos that I play on this map, you'll know that I almost always go to C on this map, and the reason for that is there's enough cover up there that I can disengage without having the whole enemy team coming after me. And being a U.S. standard battleship with the slow speed, I also know that people are going to go to C because there is that cover there. That's usually where all the action takes place. Some of it will take place in B, but for the most part, all of the action is going to take place in C. And that is not an, any, an exception for this battle, okay? We, we, we end up going to C, they end up kind of hovering and across all three points, and they end up making it work. So, very interesting choice on their part. The only downside to this video is it doesn't show the anti-aircraft suite on it, and how good that the anti-aircraft suite really is. Now, this is nowhere near what the Colorado class had by the end of World War II. This is probably closest to the right at the beginning of World War II configuration for these ships. And that's for better or worse, right? <laughs> uh, so, we're, we're headed off to sea here, and we can already see they've already started to cap sea. So that tells me that there's a lot of things over in sea that are really going to make my life kind of a pain. I'm already detected. That's not a huge surprise. This thing has a massive detection range. Thankfully, though, the guns, they are actually workable at the maximum range. So, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. We're going to shoot at this York. This is real... I Really shouldn't have wasted that salvo, but, well, it is what it is. You know, the start of these matches, you want to find something that's in range, and hey, we did 
1,240 damage to that poor York over there. Wasn't really anything else to shoot at that was in range. Of course, now that, uh, you know, the battle is starting to progress a little bit more, we've got a better idea of the layout of their fleet and where they're going. We are going to make good use, and we are going to go brawl it up in sea as soon as we actually get there. Of course, the downside to this is, you know, you can't do a whole lot in the way of turning because, well, if you turn, you're going to end up losing a lot of speed. So you, you want to keep your speed up. Here we are shooting at the Murmansk. You can see that the dispersion really isn't all that good from that shot. There is a magical range at which these shells just seem to cluster stupid tight. And that is something that U.S. battleships are going to have going forward, is they have this sweet spot where anything below that sweet spot, man, those guns just tighten up and are silly accurate. Well, we got this little prison island thing here, and so we're going to go ahead and go around it. Make sure we get our rudder over there so that we miss it. We definitely don't want to ground ourselves because these ships take forever to back up. All right, so we've taken a pot shot at the Geniza now. now. And we got torpedoes coming in. You'll note that I am continuing to back in and out. Boom! 7,800 damage in one salvo. Not too bad. One hit, three overpens. So out of a salvo of eight, we hit with four. You could not have, and that was at 15 kilometers, you could not have done that in closed beta with this ship. Simply was not possible to do that much, to get that many hits with this ship during closed beta. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to take our next salvo. Look, look at that shot grouping. That is just nuts. And we took 12k off in one salvo. Again, four hits, only three of them penetrated. The other one didn't penetrate, it bounced. But still, in two salvos, we've done basically 20,000 damage to another tier 7 battleship. And this is a the Colorado? Like, I was confused, legitimately confused as to what was going on at this point, because the Colorado has never played this well. Never. In fact, getting this game in closed beta was nearly impossible. So, like I said, color me impressed. This is this has definitely been one of the more fun ships to get back, because it's basically a, a New Mexico that is upgunned. Like, what? How can you argue with that? Again, look at that shell pattern. 13k out. 4k in damage. Not a whole lot in damage, but you can see there we took a, a salvo of, of uh, 4k from the Nagato there. And we are going to return the favor. The Nagato is another one of them big seven ships, so we're going to go ahead and return it to one of the big sevens. Now you see I've started to angle away, and somebody pointed this out in my New Mexico video that I, I spend more time going away than I do going towards the enemy. There's a very good reason why I do that at this point. You'll notice that there's really no other ships around me. There was 9,200 hit points off of that Nagato. You'll notice that there's no other ships really around me aside from these cruisers and, the, and these, this battleship to, my e to the east of me, off my right side. And they're not pushing hard enough or fast enough for me to actually want to charge in there. Now, if they were right behind me or they were already ahead of me, as I would expect they would be, I'd be all about pushing into these enemies. But right now, there simply is no cover or no support from my team. I am going to turn around and do a little bit of a loop, and then we're going to start pushing because this battle starts to develop really quick. And I think had I spent time actually pot shot here at this York. Had I actually taken the time to go ahead and start pushing, this might have been a little bit different outcome. And there you can see 2400 damage. Not a huge amount of damage, but you can see how much quicker the turrets turn. In fact, if you go back and watch my previous video... Ooh, nice shot. Boom! 5300 damage from that. If you go back and watch my previous video on this, I had next to nothing good to say about the ship. Because it, it really was just awful. There, there was no excuse for how bad it actually was. And this was the paywall grind for the longest time. You could not get past this ship easily without just enduring a massive grind. 
And here we got shots out again on the Nagato. Look at that shot dispersion is just insane. And five hits. Holy cow. We went from 45 to 62, so there was 15k. I mean, the huge hit. No citadels. But at that range, how far away was that Nagato? 14k? Just a huge chunk of damage taken off. Yeah, 14k. Just a huge chunk of damage taken off for a ship that was so underwhelming for the longest time. We got that York there ahead of us. He's got torpedoes. We want to pay attention to him. We definitely want to respect him. And 4,500 damage and four hits. Not quite as good. But because that York is sitting here, we are going to go ahead and we're going to pivot and engage him. We're also going to move down to the south because we are losing the middle of this map. In fact, we are losing it faster than we should be in terms of teammates. So we've already lost it. They've had that cap since the, almost the very beginning. And the York is dead. Four hits at close range. He was very small profile to me. Can't argue too much about that. We're already up to 75,000 damage. Ooh. Took a pretty decent chunk of change there from the, uh, the Koenig. And... Or Koenig. That's a hard word to say, guys. <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but... Not exactly the world's best at pronouncing German ships. Alright, so... These two cruisers have decided to make their presence known. First thing I do is I turn away because they are armed with torpedoes. We got a Murmansk and an Omaha, both of which have very short-range torpedoes. Both of these ships are basically dead, so it's not going to take much to take them out of this fight. Especially since they're Omahas, they're close range. My secondary can probably take them out. And first salvo goes out, and the Omaha goes down. Second salvo goes out. The Murmansk survives due to overpen and bounce. Wow. Now I'm the focus of their entire team's fire. Not a good place to be, but, you know, our battleships up north aren't pushing very hard or very fast, so we don't have much of a choice in this matter. Now, this Murmansk, he beached himself. You know, it's definitely something that need, you need to pay attention to. But at the end of the day, he's not very threatening because there's a mountain in, the, in between us. We do have to worry about their German battleship, though, as well as this Belfast. And you can see overpen damage on the Belfast. This Murmansk is just chilling there. I wish somebody would kill him, but yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And with the direction I'm going, I ain't gonna go poke my head out there. We're gonna keep shooting at this Belfast, and hopefully we can kill him. At this point, though, we definitely need capture points. Well, he disappeared briefly. We took the shot anyway. Shell dispersion looks pretty good. Ooh, Minikaze took him out. All right. Overpen damage. Not a whole lot. And once again, you know, we're taking a healthy amount of damage from that uh, Koenig there. So we're going to engage him. And he is, you know, we're both brawling ships. Uh, as, as much as you can call the U.S. battleships brawling ships, we're brawling ships. <laughs> taking incoming fire from behind that time. One pen for no damage. Three shells bounced. We gotta be careful because we are exposing our broadside there to that New Mexico, but... We, we got to make the choice here between ships that we're going to try and angle up against. I need to keep the shells from doing damage to me to the ship that can hit me reliably. Now, New Mexico is reasonably accurate, so we got to give him some respect, too. All right, and there's our salvo out. Nothing. Hmm. Fascinating. I'm not entirely sure what caused that. But, I do know that that is really uncommon in this ship. In fact, the game after this, I did 110,000 damage with very little issue. So once again, we are waiting until we can get around the edge of this island here to try and take out this Koenig. And the... You can see our battleships up north have basically given up all hope and abandoned. 
Really wish that salvo. I wish it would have been a little bit more patient, but we you know 9,500 damage. We can't complain too much. Well, I guess we can complain, but we're going to angle ourselves in. And he's going to take a shot. Bounces. Every one of them. Not a single penetrating hit. Now, he's at a disadvantage because, surprise, 16-inch shells can penetrate his bow armor. Also, surprise, he's very close to me. There's 1,100 damage taken off, just for all of your trouble. Five total shell hits. We're going to transit our guns to the other side now. And you can see he missed with his salvos, because the ship has a pretty solid turning circle. The Minikaze is going to come to my rescue here. At least I hope he's coming to my rescue. And you can see we are getting a, a healthy dosage of shots coming in. Yep, I can definitely overmatch his bow. Nope, no love from the Minikaze. Minikaze is getting taken out by the secondaries on this, and he's going to land himself two torpedoes to finish off this Koenig. Next up, Belfast. Well, Belfast, I hate to break it to you, bud, but you don't have anything that's going to stop a 16-inch shell, and if you're going to expose a broadside, I will be more than happy to take your Citadel for 16,000 damage. <laughs> and then another 5k on top of that. That's five... That, sorry, that was six total hits out of a salvo of eight. Disappear on me. Well, that's just rude. Okay, so this is one of my favorite things. Yeah, go ahead and, and shoot there in your smoke. I'm going to find you. Especially since I knew roughly about where you were at. Well, maybe we won't find him. We do need to make up our mind. You can see this battle. It started to look to me like this battle, we could possibly win this. And... Looks are very deceiving. Now we got two fires, of course, battleship damage control techniques. You always want to save those damage control parties until you get a number of fires. Now a secondaries are going to town. Okay, you can see where secondaries are coming out from. We hit him. So we got three overpens on there and one ricochet, and now he is exposed. I don't know why he's exposed. I don't know if there is a ship that has radar or what's exposing him, but he is definitely out in the open. I'm not personally complaining. Yeah, go ahead and shoot that AP at my broadside, dude. That's going to help you out a lot. Okay, so he disappeared again. There must have been a... Oh, and now he's dead. There must have been a ship that was able to spot him. I don't know what was able to spot him or if he just ran out of the backside of his smoke, I guess. That makes it certainly makes the most sense. Now we really need that Pensacola to go cap uh, A down there because he's the only one that has any speed to actually do it. I'm going to try and help our Fuso. Pray that he stays alive. Pray that I stay alive. You can see we're up to 130,000 damage. At this point, this would be one, an absolutely amazing game in closed beta. And in this match... You know, this ain't this isn't a bad score by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so he's gonna open this Nagato is gonna open up on us a little bit. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot at his broadside and pray that we can take him out of this fight. We just capped. So that's good. Oh 12k damage, but not enough to kill him. And he misses entirely. You could see what I was getting at with the dispersion on this ship is totally different from what it used to be. And there's the Fuso finishing him off. We actually stand a chance now. All we need is the caps and time. We ha They have two ships. We have three. This Fuso, provided he doesn't expose himself to, a, to their New Mexico, he could reasonably get... He could reasonably help us survive this mess. Shots out on that Farragut. Oh, hit him with three overpens. Oh. Well. 
Makes you wonder, but the score is now 2-2. Heavily damaged Colorado and a heavily damaged Pensacola versus a heavily damaged Farragut and an unknown New Mexico. Wow. This is really getting kind of hot. In fact, if we had five more minutes in this match, I think I could have made this work. The only way I know where that New Mexico is at is if I spot him via either my spotting craft. When it comes around, it's, you know, it's off to my right side, so it very well could detect him. Oh, there he is. So he has come around a mountain. There she blow. We are going to angle in straight at him. In fact, we have to angle in straight at him. We now have two caps. He bounced. I did 4K to him. We also know that that Farragut is coming around, so the last thing I want to do is expose myself. Look at how many hit points he has left. So I did a fairly sizable chunk of damage to him. And New Mexico can't shoot at me, thankfully. Okay, are we going to be able to get this poor little Farragut? Get him, secondaries. Get him. He's going to launch torpedoes. It's down to the wire. Come on, turret's turn. Boom. All right. Three kills, 150,000 damage in a Colorado. And yes, bad DD. Bad DD. Not because he was playing poorly, but because he was being evil and mean. You can see that this ship, unfortunately, can outturn its turrets. And this is with, if I remember correctly, Steven Seagal as the commander. Which, duh. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep ourselves angled. We're going to try and use as much of our armor to our advantage as possible. He does 2k to me. I can survive 2k salvos. I cannot survive 8k salvos. I guess I could just barely survive 8k salvos. Shoot that last salvo. Okay, he takes off another 3k. My final salvo of the match. 10,000 damage. 160,000 damage game, and we're going to lose just barely by points. Look at how close this match is. Had this match gone on any longer... There's a very real possibility that we could have won this match. In fact, this next salvo most likely could have finished off that New Mexico, at least to the point where the fires were going to get him. But unfortunately, because of the time, well, we'll take the shot, but it ain't going to count, unfortunately. So we end up losing this match, but you can see in just how I was playing the ship, you always want to be maneuvering. It does take damage kind of like a German battleship does, but, you know, it is what it is. High Caliber, Confederate, and Dreadnought, 160,000 damage. Three kills. Two, only two Citadel hits in this match. And we would, uh, oh, team score. 1,539 base XP. You can see the secondaries at 565 damage. There's a credit screen. Anyway, you can see from this map just how capable the ship is when played right. And like I said, I haven't played the ship in a year. So this ship... Just very capable when played like a U.S. standard battleship is. And, and in a brawling role where there's no torpedoes to worry about, just absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. You guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.